Isn't that depressing? So what is true about ODEs then? When do we have a unique solution? This is the point of the celebrated ODE existence uniqueness theorem. And all it says is, if your function is nice, then your ODE has a unique solution. So consider the following ODE, y prime equals f of yt with a given initial condition. So y of zero equals y naught. So this thing is given. And what this says, once again, if f is nice, we have a unique solution. More precisely, if f and what's called the partial derivative with respect to y are continuous, then we do have a unique solution. The ODE has a unique solution solution for y of t for t close to zero. For t close to zero. Now, I invite you to pause this for a second, really absorb what this says. But once again, all this says is if f is nice, we have a solution. So this is just a way of saying f is nice. However, let's elaborate on this a little bit. So, because I'm sure you must have lots of questions about this. So first of all, this weird symbol, df over dy, that's what's called the partial derivative. derivative of f with respect to y or with this respect to y. <laughs> to y. And all this means is you differentiate f with respect to y, treating t as a constant. You just differentiate it with respect to one variable. And the next thing is, what does close to zero mean? Zero means we just have some wiggle room around zero for which there is a unique solution. So in other words, there is a sum delta positive such that there is a unique solution, so y of t exists on minus delta delta. And it's like an eight. So kind of think of this being zero, and there's just some small region around zero for which we have a solution. And just a couple of things. So uh, here we assume f and a partial derivative are continuous. Well, this theorem is actually just a local theorem. So it's enough to be continuous near the initial condition. That's fine. And you can even replace it with what's called Lipschitz, which is beyond the scope of this course. Last but not least, there's nothing special about zero being the initial condition. This is actually true for any initial time. You just translate your solution. This is true. For any initial time. T zero. Not just zero. 
address root zero to simplify things. So let's discuss this a little bit now that hopefully it's a bit clearer what this theorem says. So first of all, again, what makes this so nice is that we we at least know there's a solution to ODEs which are solved without solving them. So the question, for instance, is does this ODE have a solution? Again, very scary ODE, y prime equals y plus t squared sine of t with initial condition y of 10 equals minus 5 have a unique solution. Again, you don't even need to solve it to figure out whether it has a solution. You just need to look at the function and its partial derivative. So here, f of yt is y plus t squared sine of t. This is a continuous function. And by the way, you do not need to reprove the laws of calculus saying that sine of t is continuous or the product of continuous functions is continuous. Here, it is a continuous function. And all you need to do is also calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to y meaning you just treat t as a constant and differentiate with respect to y. So by the chain rule, this is two times y plus t and sine of t, which is also continuous. And so by the ODE existence uniqueness theorem, existence uniqueness. The answer is yes. yes. But again, not for all time as we've seen, at least some short time around t equals 10. And now just a couple more remarks. First of all, what went wrong in the examples that we discussed? So one example that we discussed in a previous video, y prime equals square root of y. Well, the theorem fails because, Because, and that's quite interesting, even though our function is continuous, is continuous, the partial derivative is not. So df over dy is 1 over 2 squared of y. It blows up at the initial condition. It's not continuous. near y equals zero, because remember, we assume y of zero equals zero here. So that's one thing, because the partial derivative blows up. We don't necessarily have a unique solution, which we've seen. And the other example was for y prime equals y squared. Well, here, the theorem is true. So y squared is continuous and so is 2y. But remember, the theorem only guarantees short time existence. So the theorem is true, but only guarantees.
short time existence. We're not saying anything about long existence or existence for large T, but there are actually theorems that guarantee existence uh, for long time as well. But it's beyond the scope of the course. And then just two more things. So first of all, there's a very um, surprising application of this theorem. Because one application says solutions to ODEs can never cross. To y prime equals f of yt never cross. And this is essentially due to uniqueness because suppose you have one solution that looks like that. Let's see, goes like this. Y one of t, and then another solution that looks like this, and they cross. But the problem is this violates uniqueness at this point, because suppose this is the initial condition, then the problem is there would be two solutions with the same initial condition both y1 and y2. So that would violate uniqueness. Last but not least, uh, I do just wanna mention a quick word on the proof. There's a more uh, thorough, no, outline in the lecture notes and also in a separate video, but intuitively. So why is this theorem true? It's true. Well, because just look at the ODE. Because in the ODE, y prime equals f of yt, it's f that controls y prime. So if f is nice, then y prime is nice. If f is wild, then y prime is wild. So it is f that controls the rate of change y prime. So in particular, as I said, if F is wild, you know, like moves, like oscillates wildly, basically, then so is Y prime. Because Y prime is just F of Y of T. And well, if Y prime is crazy, then so is Y. Because think of a car that just runs and stops, runs and stops, and it's just completely untamed. That's how it is as well. So is Y. And conversely, if F is smooth and doesn't go too crazy, then Y prime is smooth and so is Y by integrating. 